Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host and today there is no guest again so I'm going to be talking a bit more about the pelvic floor. Last time I spoke about the pelvic floor I covered what the pelvic floor is, what its function is and what um what's the symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction are what can happen if things go wrong so if you want to know more about that part of things i will post a, the uh, links to that one in the show notes or i'll pop it somewhere on this screen if you're watching this on youtube so today what i would like to talk to you about so we went through what happens when things go wrong I want to tell you today how things can go wrong. We're going to go over a few life factors that can cause dysfunction. And as always, I mean, if you notice any of these things, don't fret and don't think that's it, you're doomed forever. But do be aware. And if you want to get in touch, please do so. You can book a free call with me and we can have a chat and we can go through things. So it's not the end of the world if these things are happening or have happened in the past. It's about figuring out how to better yourself and how to improve and how to do things better in the future. If you are watching on YouTube, I have got a couple of props. So if you're listening on your podcasting app whatever it is you're using please just i'll try and use descriptive words so without further ado let's get into it there are a few and the first one so i am a women's health coach i work with women um, and their pelvic floor i don't work with men men do have a pelvic floor and this can affect men also so if any of these come up and you think oh it sounds like my brother my dad my husband anything like that then it could be and there are pelvic floor physiotherapists who do work with men also um i can point you in the right direction but i am going to be focusing on women predominantly so first things first it is being a woman being a woman is one of the things that gears women up for having more pelvic floor issues such as incontinence or prolapse more than men and the reason is and this is where the video comes in handy if you're watching on youtube it's because we have three holes so men have um the penis and they have the urethra that goes through the pelvic floor muscles and they have the anus and the rectum that goes through the back of the pelvic floor muscles if you can see on my lady there's a small hole just at the top that is the urethra where the wee comes out and at the back there's the anus where the poo comes out and the men have quite a big area between that's all muscle women on the other hand we have this third hole and a lot of women that third hole will stretch to take up the whole space here other women it won't stretch that far it'll just stretch a little bit and but we still have that hole so there's still no muscle there and so things can get a bit weaker just just because of the fact that we only have what well, we have an extra hole so that's the first one and i have written a list down because i don't want to miss anything the rest they kind of center or the next ones that i'm going to list they kind of center around pressure management the first one i want to mention is heavy lifting 
And I don't just mean at the gym. You don't have to be a weightlifter to cause pelvic floor issues. If you are constantly lifting weights, if you are a carer, if you are a parent and you're constantly picking up a child and this child gets heavier and heavier, they never get any lighter, do they? And you're picking them up and you're holding your breath and you're going, and you're doing a little bit of a bearing down motion when you're lifting them. That's putting pressure on the pelvic floor. And if you do it over and over again, it will eventually cause strain and weakness. And that's when you end up with issues like prolapse or incontinence. Um, along the same line, if anyone's ever had a hernia, pressure management. So the core is linked to the pelvic floor. Everything is a nice big cylindrical system. And if there is pressure building up inside that zone, that core area, it's going to push on the weakest point and the weakest point is going to give way. And that is where hernias or incontinence or prolapse or putting your back out can occur. Same thing with carrying. If you're carrying children for a long period of time, there are a lot of um, baby wearing products out there and baby backpacks where you can carry your baby on a hike. A lot of these things over time, as you get tired over a hike or, or walk or whatever it is you're doing, then the pressure is going to be going on the pelvic floor. Your posture might change and that can cause downward pressure on the pelvic floor. So just be mindful if you are a person who does have a prolapse, for example, or be mindful if you're noticing that you're having a bit of trouble holding on to go to the go for a wee, it might be you might be just carrying for long periods of time or constantly lifting and putting down. Um, now, if you are somebody who lifts a lot at the gym, you're an avid crossfitter or power lifter. There is what's called the Valsalva maneuver, which is kind of a <gasps> holding your breath to push and use that extra energy to lift a weight that can also bear down on your pelvic floor muscles and cause stress and strain, which will eventually, there's holes there, things will leak out of them. The next one is oh, carrying on with the bearing down action. Childbirth. As women, as I said, this is, focused on women a lot of women do get pregnant they do give birth you do give birth and a lot of the time it is through the vagina sometimes it is via cesarean i'll cover that in a moment but the bearing down to physically push that baby out through here through the vagina for those of you who can see is going to cause issues and pregnancy as well you've got a growing baby that's getting bigger and bigger pushing down on the pelvic floor so even if you do have a cesarean you haven't missed out on pelvic floor issues as well it just might not be as bad if things haven't stretched and you haven't dilated so dilation is when the cervix is being stretched and the baby's head is pushing on the cervix to stretch it to go around the head. And then the vagina is going to be stretching. And everything is stretching to fit the baby in through the vagina. And all these muscles are going to stretch. So if you're listening to this and you're not, you're not watching this on a video, I want you to imagine for me sit up nice and tall or just visualize your sitting bones visualize so your sitting bones are these two here on the side the bones that you can feel when you're sitting you've got your pubic bone at the front you've got your tailbone at the back so just imagine those areas and visualize your vagina in the middle 
all of that area that is as big as a baby's head okay so those muscles have got to stretch and make room for that baby's head to come through so it is going to be a bit of a fatiguing exercise on the muscles and after a little while things start to get a bit more back to normal i don't like using that word back to normal but they start they start coming back and recovering so in your recovery journey just be aware of how you're lifting your baby and how you're moving because the pressure that you put down while it's weak just might hinder the healing process the next one um along the lines of bearing down is constipation if you're constantly bearing down and pushing to push out a poo then that is going to cause strain and weakness on the pelvic floor muscles and ways you can help with that i do cover this when i do work with my clients but just looking at your diet looking at what you're eating what you're drinking getting better toileting habits can help with that big time and if i can tell you two tips right now one make sure you're drinking plenty of water so up to two liters of water a day um plus your fruits and veggies and that will get you up to about three liters when i say water you can have um herbal teas plain water juices and things like that just watch the sugar content of things um coffee is fine but it is a bladder irritant so it might cause you to go a bit more often and the other one find a little stool get some way of raising your knees higher than your hips and lean forward and that should open things up a little bit if you've ever seen the squatty potty advert plug for squatty potty there so that is constipation our next one if you've ever been a childhood gymnast or you've been quite flexible that is going to stretch muscles that can be one thing that is kind of all i'm going to go into there if hyper flexibility is something that you have then things are going to be a bit more lax and a bit more supple and we can go through strengthening procedures there chronic cough so another one of bearing down if you are asthmatic or you have um, copd or emphysema bronchitis anything like that or you terribly suffer with hay fever and you're always sneezing with allergies um, chronic vomiting if you're going through a lot of morning sickness or you've got a terrible tummy bug or food poisoning you're constantly running to the toilet the pressure from the <coughs> or the ch or the uh, all of those if it's a repeat if it's a repetitive thing and you're not mindful of it and there's a lot of bearing down the pushing down as you do a bit uh, every time you cough that can cause leaks as well so if you notice if you have a coughing fit and you've got a full bladder you might leak that could be something there that could be an issue hopefully you haven't ticked too many of these off yet we're working our way through let me know in the comments how you're getting on so far with these messages i've got a couple more and then that's it the next one if i've missed any as well please let me know in the comments surgery so i mentioned before um when having a baby you might give birth vaginally or you might give birth via a c-section a c-section isn't the easy way out so you're never going to be less of a mother just because you've given birth via the sunroof it's still a big procedure it is a major operation and it does take a lot of time to just look after yourself and heal and get things functioning and what I want to say about a C-section or any surgery, you can have abdominal surgery, um, pelvic floor surgery, if you've had um, hysterectomy or um, laparoscopic surgery for endometriosis, that can affect 
but with a C-section, imagine my fingers here and just here is where they've cut and the message isn't getting through. If you imagine like a Newton's cradle, do you remember those with the, the four metal balls suspended on strings and you spring one and you let it go and it hits and it goes through the balls and it comes out and it knocks the other ball away and then it comes back and the message is going back and forth and it's the message is translating it's transferring through the stationary balls to move the one at the end imagine if there was maybe a piece of paper in the middle the message isn't going to go quite as well through the balls and we have to test that theory if you've got something in the way, such as a scar, now a C-section scar, when you're pregnant, it, there's a lot of room. The belly's bigger, the muscles are stretched, the uterus is bigger as it cuts through there, but as it shrinks down, things can get a bit stuck together and it can inhibit messages going through to A, your pelvic floor, or B, from your brain to your leg, to move your leg to slam on the brakes in the car it could be i like that analogy just thought of it then it was quite a good one eh? it could be if you're doing the newton's cradle and you've got a piece of paper and it's just going and the message is getting dampened on that piece of paper or that scar tissue and it's not quite going through the other way so finding a massage therapist who works with scar tissues or Again, I can talk to you and show you some methods. They will help just break down the tissue and help things getting back to normal. Another thing with surgery, and what I mentioned in the last podcast, you can have a pelvic floor that's too tight and no amount of strengthening exercises is going to make a pelvic floor work better because if it's too tight, it's not able to flex and do what it needs to do. And with surgery and injury, if you've fallen over and broken your tailbone, for example, or even back pain, you're holding yourself a bit rigid, it's tight and your pelvic floor muscles, along with any muscle that's injured, is going, ah, danger, danger, pain, out, out, out. So if you've had pelvic floor surgery or any kind of surgery, pelvic organ surgery, like hysterectomy or even prolapse recovery, things might get a bit eek, a bit tight and a bit ooh, 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 and you might get pain radiating from that. So it's not always about strengthening. Sometimes you need to talk to somebody about relaxing and finding methods to just help, help on that recovery journey. So if you do notice that you get leaks after some kind of injury or surgery, then get in touch and we can have a chat about just how you, how you get through that. What was next on the list? I think the last one is aging. Like everything, as we get older, things start to degenerate a little bit. And our muscles, if you don't use them, you lose them. Our muscles are reactive. They're not proactive. So if we are sitting down a lot, if we do sedentary lifestyle activities, if we have a desk job, if we're sitting, feeding a baby a lot and we can't get up and do anything because we're glued to a baby on the couch, or if we're injured and we're trying to recover and we've, we're on bed rest, all of these things, leads to muscles just for want of a better phrase wasting away they atrophy because if they're not used the body isn't going to expel that energy to try and keep them there that's all there is to it so a moderate exercise routine moderate strengthening all of these things walking will help and as we get older and then as we go through menopause our hormones change and that affects how our body uses the fuel and where it uses it and what it does with muscle formation. So, I mean, really the answer to 99.9% .9 of these is 
get a holistic core restore coach and either myself, which I am one, or one of the hundred plus other coaches around the world will be able to help you with resistance training, with learning how to connect to the pelvic floor, learning how to manage pressure. So as I mentioned at the start, a lot of these were pressure management. And what we like to teach first and foremost is how to breathe, how to get everything functioning properly. So when we're living life, we're not pushing down, putting pressure on our pelvic floor and causing issues that will set us up for dysfunction. While we're on that and i want to give you something to oops something to try if you're sitting down wherever you are i want you to just think about pressure management for a moment and i want you to just take a little bit of a breath in and bear down as if you were trying to poo so just go and then relax you don't have to strain too hard just enough so you can feel it pressing down if you're not driving sit on your hand so you can either go backwards or forwards whichever one works best and just push down can you feel anything so i can feel it when my anus drops i move my hand forward i can feel my vagina push against my hand that's a good feedback tool maybe just place it around your perineum which is between your anus and your vagina and push into that can you feel that moving it's not a huge amount unless you're really really pushing it's just a little bit now the next one is hopefully you know how to do your kegels i will go through a little bit later on in another podcast another episode but i want you to um lift up as if you were trying to stop passing wind, so stop farting, so lifting up and then relax. Can you feel the difference between that and pushing down? That's the first key to the puzzle after breathing, okay? So that is kind of what the aim is. And again, if you want to try it with the front, you can try it with the front. So you've already done the bearing down. Now see if you can lift up like you're trying to stop a wee. Can you feel things go up away from your fingers? Okay. So I think that's the first step. That's not the end. That's not how you get to functionality and moving along and doing life. Because if you're going to pee yourself, you don't really want to be touching yourself out in public to stop that. So try those in private and then if you've got that great if you haven't got that that's fine book a call with me and i can go through some things further with you and we can talk about how to progress and get you back to living a functional life without issues without worrying about peeing or pooing yourself or making a prolapse worsen or recovering after a hysterectomy or surgery or anything like that. So I will pop the links in the show notes. Please comment below if you'd like me to send you a message and I can send you a message and we can go from there. But until then, thank you for joining me on this episode and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.